What up, Speed Ass Garage? Welcome back to the channel. Again, we're working on the Supra. We still got so much to do. Um, and today, modification that we're doing on the Supra is a very much needed modification to any turbo application. Let me show you what I'm talking about. Check it out. Wow, what is this? Well, let me explain. All right, fam. This thing right here is called an oil catch can. Why do we have this? When you turbocharge a vehicle, crankcase pressure increases, meaning that uh, it increases the chance of blow-by. Blow-by is the pressure that seeps past the piston rings and then it goes into the, basically goes into the oil pan. Somehow, scientifically, it works its way up to the valve cover. And if you have an opening like these two openings right here, of these fittings that we got from radium. If you have some open on the valve cover, what happens is, is oil spews out everywhere. The more blow by you got, the more oil shoots out of those valve covers. And that's why this is called a catch can because guess what? It catches the oil in a can. Usually the rule of thumb is, is you're gonna run dash 10 lines. You can run like a 12 depending on your setup. We got plenty of dash 10 line. And then of course we got the breather filter on top. Um, you also got a little drain on the bottom, so over time this thing accumulates moisture. Um, if the motor's running pretty good, it'll accumulate moisture with a little tint of oil in it. When it starts catching like a bunch of oil, um, that's a no-no. But you got the drain that you can drain everything with. Guess where we got this item from? Ding, 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 ding. You guessed it, eBay. I forget how much the kit costs. I wanna say it was maybe like around $120 range. I will see if I can put a link um, in the description below if you're interested in it. Um, but as far as all the catch can setups I've seen on eBay so far, this is about the nicest one. Uh, let me show you the one that I bought for my vehicle that didn't work out too well. Um, this can is a no-no for a couple of reasons. See that bottom right there? And you see this fitting? That don't go in there because there's no freaking threads. And then look at this filter. This joker shaking like James Brown back in the day, man. And you know, I wanted to take it apart and inspect everything, but then check out that. Check out where them jokers in China or Taiwan or the Philippines or whoever this junk made this mess. Look at that, how they just jacked the threads up and then they try to like play it off like, like everything was cool. No, man, everything ain't cool. And that's why I went on eBay and I hit them jokers with a complaint. And guess what? Your boy got his money back. That catch can was like $32, $34. And I'm about to take that money and apply it to another can. Yeah, that's me throwing a temper tantrum of, of, of them jokers not sending me the right kind of can that was all jacked up. All right, let me show you where we're gonna put this thing at. This is kind of what we're looking at. Over here on the passenger side, kind of tucked up and sneaky away. And uh, I want to bolt it on this side here. I'm not a big fan of using like self tapping screws and drilling stuff in. So what I'm gonna have to do is make a bracket. Looks like we got a, a bolt hole there that we can utilize. Let me go ahead and start off with making a bracket for this backside. Of course, there's a lot of measuring taking place, but guess what? I'm gonna bring you guys along for the journey. All right, fam, and just if you don't know, I know all my Garner Senior High alumni, they know your boy nasty with pen and paper. So I got to break this junk out like A's and B's. We're gonna start with the bracket that goes here, five inches. So this is gonna be five inches, bolt hole to bolt hole. Looks like four. And then, um, and then we got from here to here, which is where it's gonna bolt up at four inches. Draw that hole. And then I think to stabilize it, depending on how weak it feels, I may add a little structure piece from here to here to kind of alleviate any kind of weight or stress, but I think we might be all right. Let's go ahead and uh, transfer this to the material that we're gonna use to make this uh, bracket. Hey, and look, man, I, I can't begin to express how much I love these people that are local. And the people I'm talking about is, is Metal Supermarket. Remember all them little straps that I bought in that little bundle set? I mean, I probably got like 20 of these. And guess what? That's gonna be perfect to make this bracket. All 
All right, guys, the bracket that we got for the catch can is done. So now I want to make this piece here. And real quick, that's two inches. Two inches from bolt hole to bolt hole. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go from that bolt hole here and then I'm gonna make my dot. I'm gonna punch this puppy. That joke broke. Nope, it's not broke. I won't push it hard enough. Draw a line there where I need to cut that also. And then another thing I like to do too is I want to, I know that I want to keep this piece. Sometimes I do like a little line right there just in case I ever get confused. All right, everybody, if you've been watching my videos, you already by now know the process uh, of welding, TIG welding in particular, especially aluminum. Um, the process is after you get everything situated, you have to prep this material, meaning that you have to sand it down. I've been trying to find an effective way to sand down the stuff right before I weld it. A lot of people just use like the maroon scotch bright pad and then they basically just kind of do this hand motion and kind of work the material all clean and bright. But let me show you what I discovered that should make like doing this kind of stuff a whole lot easier. Wow, check this out. I went to Harbor Freight, bought these two little balls. I want to say they were like $7.99. I want to say this one is a little bit more coarse than this one. But basically all you do is put them in a drill and you run the drill on top of that to clean it up. Dang, man, that jump came right out of the chuck. Look at that. Look how bright and shiny that thing came out. So that's a tech tip of the day. Go to Harbor Freight, spin you about $7.99 and get you some of these balls so you can polish up your pipe. Whoever knew the balls was good at polishing pipe? I ain't know, but man, you know. Thank me later. Square this up. That looks good. All right, guys, we're gonna start off with uh, AC settings, like 78. Yeah, 78 amps. And uh, the frequency I'm gonna do like a, I'm gonna do like kind of like in between. We're gonna we're gonna do it like 200. I'm gonna see if I can get a tack. Attack with no uh, with no filler. Let's see what I can do. Yup, it worked. Got the bracket bolted up. That's what it looks like. Doesn't look too bad. So let's go ahead and see if we can mock it up in the super engine bay. I actually got the bracket upside down. We got that bracket installed in the catch can put into place uh, the last thing we need to do is we need to run these two dash 10 lines across this firewall and we got one there and then we got one on the opposite side so once again i'm gonna pull my tape measure out take a couple of measurements mark a couple of things with my yellow paint pen and we're gonna do what we do at speed at his garage all right i'm gonna start with the fitting that's farthest away I'll go ahead and screw this straight on. 
turn it down. And let's go ahead and put that 90 on that I just got finished making. I mentioned it before but before you make any cuts on this kind of uh, cabling you need to wrap it with uh, some kind of tape I usually use uh, painters tape a lot of people that mess with this kind of stuff they do not like their eBay fittings and this is one of the reasons why um, but I'm not going to necessarily bring them on the fitting um, I'm gonna put that one on me it was cocked just a smidge when I installed it. Um, but either way, I had another one in stock. Um, I always keep this kind of stuff hanging around. So I got another one. And uh, another thing too to add is, is whenever you go to thread this piece into this piece with the hose in there, I'm trying to tell you boy, that petroleum jelly go a long ways. And I probably didn't mention it before, but before you install a line that you make like this, meaning that you had to cut it with some kind of tool, you need to make sure you rinse out the inside or hit the uh, inside of the hose with some compressed air. All them fragments and debris and all that rubber and whatnot that's inside of here will end up getting into whatever you're installing this on. So make sure you clean it, wash it out, hit it with some compressed air, then you can install it. And also, sometimes it helps to spray a little WD-40 or some kind of lubricant on the backside. And then I also use that petroleum jelly and put a little bit on this. And I put some on the threads, uh, for example, on that catch can threads. Hey, y'all ready to see the final result? Huh? Y'all ready to see what this thing look like? Wow, look at that, boy. Good gracious. That mess look fresh. There is like a little bit of a hard kink right there. Um, I don't think it's gonna be a problem, if you can tell, maybe from that angle. But that's all we got to work with. Um, if Adam wants to decide in the future, for example, we could probably do like a straight coming off of both of these and kind of maneuver it a little bit where it kind of comes straight across and come up. But uh, I think that's gonna work. I don't, I don't think that's gonna be a problem, Dad. Gonna... So that's gonna conclude this episode of how to install a catch can on the MK4 or Maybe not even a how-to, just you guys are following along, get up to 700 horsepower. So once again, stick on, stick around. Um, as you can tell, the last few episodes, we're doing quite a bit of cosmetic stuff to the Supra. So we got one more modification. I can say one more modification, but we got another cool addition to add to this engine bay. And uh, and by the way, look at that, man. That mess came out good. I'm real proud of, I'm real proud of uh, making that work right there. So either way, Thank you guys for stopping by, showing your boy some love. Hit the subscribe button, hit the like button. And guess what? I love you. Take it easy.